I'm hearing that Orange is the New Black is even better than House of Cards. I haven't actually caught that one. Have you seen both? You I probably have. have. I have. It's, it, job. it's gotten great, great feedback, as did uh, you know House of Cards as well. So it looks like Netflix has got an, you know, another pretty good winner on its hands in terms of original programming. So, and that's kind of the name of the game for all these pay TV providers is not just to repackage TV shows and movies, but to really focus on core original programming that can really drive subscriber growth. Because I think in the past it was probably hard for a company like Netflix to get top-notch producers, top-notch writers, and now it seems like, hey, listen, all the best content is going to go to them first. It really is, and I think HBO really kind of wrote the book on this with, you know, The Sopranos and all these other uh, shows, and we're seeing, you know, lots of, not just premium cable networks like Showtime and HBO, but also basic cable such as AMC with, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mad Men, for example, and now these uh, video-on-demand providers like Netflix are also paying up for A-list talent and A-list uh, content. So then what does it mean, how does it translate for subscriber growth? Because as far as I can tell, that's all anybody cares about. Nobody even cares about profit or revenue anymore for Netflix. Every single thing I read is about subscriber growth. That's right. That's what the market really is focusing on, is on subscriber growth. Much like America Online back in the early days, subscriber growth. So, And what drives subscribers, uh, Netflix believes, is better and better and more and more quality content. And that used to be just getting the best TV shows and the best movies, but that's not enough anymore. They now need to have high quality, you know, original programming that can really stand out amongst, you know, the competition. Okay, speaking of competition, who do you see, out of curiosity, as Netflix's main competition? Is it Amazon Prime? Is it Hulu? Is it HBO? Who's, who's number one? Right, well, if you listen to Netflix, Reed Hastings will tell you it is the cable companies themselves with their vast libraries of video on demand, and I think that's very true for the near term. But longer term, I think you have to start looking at some of the technology companies that are starting to, are expressing a big interest in getting into the television business. Last Intel. week, Intel. Right. You know, we had Google, uh, Microsoft. Uh, last week, Google said that they were, you know, considering a subscription service of its own uh, to compete, you know, directly against uh, Hulu and uh, Netflix. What does this mean for old media companies, networks? I think for the near term, everything's fine. I think the, the reality is the content creators are really the ones that are benefiting here. So the Hollywood studios, the TV networks, the ones that are creating the content, they're actually doing very well licensing their content to more and more providers. Longer term, they have to be concerned about the changing viewer viewing habits and what that means for the existing pay TV model.